Welcome to the study this morning. Uh, we're going to begin with a word of prayer. The dear Father in heaven, thank you for your goodness and love and for the time that we have this morning to study together. We pray for your spirit's presence in our lives, in this study, to lead and guide us and to bring power and conviction to our lives. And we pray, Lord, for each person, for the struggles that they face each day um, in this world and uh, for the struggles that we have of comprehending truth and obeying your word. We just ask for your spirit's presence in our lives. And we're thankful for the way that you have blessed us, even in our trials. We ask, Lord, that as we continue to study the book of Judges, uh, that the light that comes from your word will guide us and, and give us um, the strength in our faith uh, that you are leading, but also to correct us when we are in error. Be with us now, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> okay, so yesterday was a lot of math. We went through a lot of things, and we're going to, we're not going to go through all those things, but we're just going to highlight a few things uh, that we that we see here. So, um, so in Judges uh, chapter five, we're looking at the song of Deborah and Barak, and we had noticed this symbol of forty thousand, and we had divided it by three hundred and sixty, and we got this eleven eleven or one hundred eleven point. One 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 number, and uh, and if we did the inverse, that is, if we just uh, took forty thousand and divided it by one hundred and eleven, we would get three sixty point three sixty three sixty etc. So that's understandable on how math works, but the idea is that we have this symbol of one hundred and eleven, and so when we look at the song of Deborah and Barak, we know that it's a zoom into in in the story of Deborah and Barak. It's a zoom into what we had placed as January 11th, 2020. And we're saying that that's the, the repeat of history, the four angels message arriving, which is of course the second angels message. And that this relates to our movement. So um, in this line of this Levitical line that Jeff had recognized going from June 9th, 2018 to January 11th, 2020, we can see how, why we put this date here and why the song of Deborah and Barak um, in Judges chapter five is, is a repeat of this history. And this is a history regarding this light that came in relation to time that pointed to 9-11. So these are all interlocked. And we had looked also at how Samuel Snow's letters were fulfilled in our history in this 126 days. This other period, which I probably should have finished off, even though it's pretty obvious, that this is also a period of 126 days here. And just to finish off that chiastic structure. Sense there. Okay, so so we can see how that all fits together. Now, in um, now there was a point that um, Iran had mentioned to me, and maybe you could mention that again, Iran, regarding June 9th, two thousand eighteen. Uh, some of the symbols there. Yeah. So the prayer was at. 2111 or 9 p.m. basically and 11 minutes. Um, so 2111 is the 318th prime, which is the, you know, that'd be like the symbol 813 in reverse. Okay. So Palmoni is being demonstrated there at 911 p.m. That's what you're saying. Yeah. And, and we have that also, of course, in 2017, the 9-11 prayer. So, so those, 
those are tied together. But here, this is the one that begins this structure. So this is closing the Sabbath, beginning June 10th. And June 10th, Parminder is going to present time setting. And Jeff is going to accept it. So um, now this, of course, lines up with Samuel Snow's letters. And Samuel Snow's first letter is going to be this 216, February 16th. That's going to be pointing to October 22, 1844. But it's, um, you know, there's a lot more to that structure. So uh, and when we look here at the Song of Devon Brack now, so let's move back to here. Um, and what we have is we're saying that this is a zoom out in onto January 11th. 2020, but now this is going to go to January 11th, 2023. But it's going to start on November 9th. It's not going to start on January 11th. That is, it's going to take that last 63 days um, that we had in that Levitical chiasm, and that's what it's going to start with. So I'm just going to put it here, 63. Okay. And um, now we have a symbol here of November 9th is of 11,000 or 1,190, right? And if we go from this date, this 11,9, we go to uh, Stephen's birthday when he turned 54. Now, of course, 54 is a symbol of midnight. Um, but we know that prior to September 11th, 2001, Stephen J Jameson was born 11,900 days prior to September 11th, 2001, right? So this 1,190 be gains more significance because it then ties together, what we have already said are tied together is 9-11 and 11-9, right? And that 11,900 days comes from the Islamic calendar, that's 33 years and seven months on the Islamic calendar, 32 years and seven months on the Gregorian calendar. So there's that space of one year. And we also saw that if we took, uh, we, don't, we don't have it written here, but if we have, have 777 prophetic months and 777 lunar months, that is synodic months, the difference is 365 days. So it's it's sort of in here, right, that 365, but we can see between December 25th, 2021 and January 11th, 2020 is 365 plus 18 days. That's 383 days. So I probably need to put in here, uh, just dealing with this 777, another text box, to make sure that we have that information. So I'm just going to do it here. Um, 77 times 30 equals 23310, right? Days. And 777 times 29.530587 equals uh, 22945 days. Difference is 365. Okay, so that I just, and we all know 365 is a year, so we don't need to write that in there. So the difference is 365. And so that, that's a year, right? So we have this year, and we can see here with this 777 days, we're going to have... Um, a prophetic, not a prophetic year, a, a biblical year, what's called a deficient uh, embolismic year, difference between December 25th and January 11th. Now, if I counted it inclusively, it'd be 
four, but you know, it's just the cardinal count there. So 365 plus 18 days. Okay, 25, 26. Six. So that's actually is the in, inclusive count because we're counting from the to the end of January 11th when we count January 11th, 2023. So um, now that's going to be um, how many days that's going to be uh, if you count to the end, I think it's 1096 days if you count from beginning of Jan January 11th, 2020. Uh, and to the end of uh, January 11th, 2023. Right. So I don't know if I should put that in there or not. Um, what would be the significance of that number of days, 10,096? Anybody have any ideas what that is? Nope, don't have anything on that. <laughs> okay, it, it's a little bit more obscure. It's um, 10,096 is uh, eight times 137. Now, 137 is just uh, the week of Christ, 31 AD, of course, written backwards, right? And times eight, and eight is the number of the resurrection. So it's referring to the week of Christ in which Christ is crucified and resurrected. So it's, it's a bit obscure, um, but uh, it's there. Yeah, it's there. Right. So, but the thing is we see from this January 11th to this January 11th, we have that symbol there. It's three years as well. Right. From 2020 to 2023. Um, so, you know, maybe there's more to it if we, we looked at it um, in other ways. I don't know, but uh, that's that's the span of time. Now, of course, we have um, some other things too, just dealing with this 11, 111. So one of the things we know is 111 times seven is 777, right? We also know yes. that... 11 times 17 is 187, right? So if you take those digits 1117 and you divide them, you know, in the middle you and you multiply them, you get 187, right? And that comes from the story of Joseph. There's that uh, 17 years and 11 years, then 11 years and 17 years, that chiasm. And the center of that chiasm is the butler and the baker, right? The two dreams. And the three days then prior to the Pharaoh's birthday. So there's a three-day symbol there. There's lots of different symbols there. But if I take um, uh, um, yeah, so 11 times 17 is 187. We get so we get the 187 symbol. 111 times seven is the 777 symbol. And if I take 1117 and multiply it by seven. I get uh, uh, the number of days from September 11th to uh, the day that I turned uh, 60, February 6th of this year, right? So <clears throat> that's five days before Stephen turned 54. So anyway, that's, that's just... Uh, something there that that ties that into to the chronology that that we have had with birthdays so that um so these symbols that we see here they're obviously zoomed into a very specific history now we put this line here of song of, of deborah and barack as beginning on november 9th 2019 because we know that there's a period of darkness and the darkness here has to do with an understanding of chronology that the movement still had on November 9th, 2019. And, and that 
darkness of that chronology, one of the things that I present besides the 273 is I present the Mayan calendar at, on November 9th at the School of the Prophets. And in that Mayan calendar, we present the 11,900 days and 1,190 minutes. That is the period of time um, when you take uh, 391 um, uh, months, right? Um, but we're, we're actually using the those that line up with the Islamic calendar. So technically it's 403 lunar months, um, right? So it's that, that period of time that we have the uh, Islamic calendar uses one year, uh, one year more than the Gregorian calendar, right? So, um, so it just becomes this, uh, important symbol that we're going to be using here because obviously that's what's being presented is that 1190 minutes right or at least that symbol of 11,900 days and and 11,000 1190 minutes so so that's what's being presented and that's what's being symbolized here in this structure Right. And so that we have this whole line go to January 11th, 2023, that's the end of Collins' prediction. Now, Collins' prediction is given on December 25th, 2021, right? So his prediction is given one prophetic year before it or not prophetic year, biblical year, before it ends, right? So that relates to Collins' prediction. So he's going to make this prediction about Trump using this prophetic mirror, and it's going to come to an end January 11th, 2023. So that means the January 11th there at the beginning, that's the formalization of this message, is a formalization because what I presented on November 9th, 2019, Jeff is going to recognize that this is part of this chiastic structure because he's going to mark um, from January 11th, 20, 2020, 63 weeks or 4, 441 days to March 27th, 2021, right? So, so his recognition of this chronology, of this um, mirror, of what we call the Levitical mirror, the mid Levitical chiasm, is an affirmation of, of all of this that went before. So it becomes a formalization in 2020 of a certain way of looking at these structures. And that becomes really important um, when I use the, um, the Mayan calendar further to show that July 18th is a going to be a failed prediction or that it indicates that it, it might be a failed prediction, right? Because I take the position that it might, might fail at that time. Now, <clears throat> so... We're going to have to figure out what these dates are. I kind of know, but um, um, because I know what I presented here and I know what I presented here to Jeff. So I'm going to put this here, April 26th, 2020. So I send an email to Jeff saying that July 18 may be a failed prediction. So you can kind of see um, and, and so this is going to be the Levitical chiasm. Oops. Right. That's what's going to be there. And spell chiasm, right? Because they want to capitalize. Okay. And this is email. 
failed prediction. Yeah, so it's three years ago today. So you notice that I ran. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so today is April 26th. It's a symbol of the 26th day of the fourth month. Uh, we can see, obviously, we have this uh, date today that is going to be three years. We already see the three years with the two January 11ths. Um, and so, again, this it is kind of hard to, to think about. In some ways, April 26, 2020 seems like a long time ago. I mean, because so much has happened since then. Uh, but it's only three years. I mean, it, it's just so we've we've just gone through so much since then. It's just been a I blink. Okay. I mean yeah. the, the time wise. I mean, it just seems like I blinked my eyes and now it's three years. Yeah, yeah. But it, a lot has happened. If you think about all the stuff that has happened. Oh yeah. Yeah. So it's it's been a pretty um, active time in, in, in events prophetically. So <clears throat> now we of course need to tie these. So we're just dealing with here. We're now with the first angel. We did of course put the second angel and the third angel and that in there as well. But as far as where we are in understanding these passages of how we're going to put these verses, we, we need to write which verses, um, we are addressing so so we didn't do that and so we should so if we go here we know that this first part all the way up to um and i don't know why we didn't put it in yet but um so we're going to have this war in the gates this is going to be so when Deborah arose, that's going to be September 7th, right? So we're, we're going to say all this is about the period of darkness. Um, so let me see here. So... Um, so this here is going to be, right, one to seven. That's all going to be uh, marked at the beginning of that structure. So September 7th. So we'd say, I know you can't see what I'm doing, but chapter one, verse one to seven, I put there at that September 17th date. And then we know that um, uh, they choose new gods. War was in the gates. There was, there was a shield or... Was there a shield or spirit seen among the 40 and 4,000? So um, this is actually the period of time we would say from November 9th to January 11th. So it's, it's um, chapter 5, verse um, 8, actually takes up this period of time. So I'll go five A and five verse eight B. Okay, so maybe I'll go back to this so you just see what I did here, if this makes sense to people. Right, so because we got the 40,000 mentioned there, that's going to be January 11th. Uh, the battle in the gates, that's going to be what happens on November 9th. And everything else before that is just relating to, so we got really this, this battle in the gates is kind of in that period of darkness, but November 9th is where we, we mark that. That's the point um, in which probation closes for um you know, for the the omega, right? Not, you know, just as a symbol, right? It becomes a close of probation. But we also have this um, 
this light that comes. So the first angel arriving. And then we have, of course, the, the 40,000, which gives us that symbol of January 11th. Now, then as far as uh, uh, the email failed prediction, emailed the failed prediction, um, that would, um, it says, so the next verse says, my heart is toward the governors of Israel that offered themselves willingly among the pe people. Bless ye the Lord. So what is this verse, 5 verse 9? So and we and we got verse ten. So maybe five ten is more significant. But I just I want to understand what this means. My heart is toward the governors of Israel that offered themselves willingly among the people. Bless ye the Lord. What what is that saying? I mean, this is God speaking, right? So who are the governors of Israel that offered themselves willingly among the people? What is this representing? Because it just seems, in some ways, you, you you could just leave that verse out, you know, because um, we don't really know what it means. Like, we don't have any symbols for it that I can think of. Um, so, but what is it referring to? Why why would they have that verse there, just, just in the normal sense? I think it means those who, those who lead with a servant's heart. Those yeah. are the ones that God honors. Yeah. So this actually is Deborah, I think, speaking, because even though this is from the Lord, right, um, this is actually Deborah speaking. So she's speaking, right, because this is the song of Deborah and Barak. So Barak, in a sense, is speaking too. Um, so if Deborah is saying my heart, we know Deborah represents the school of the prophets. Now, this word governors, um, it means properly to hack, that is engrave, right? Uh, the word is kakak in Hebrew, to be ascribed simply by implication to an act, laws being cut in stone or metal ta tablets in primitive times are generally prescribe, appoint, decree, governor, grave, lawgiver, note, portray, print, set. So, so if we're going to take this in this more, the root of this, this is about what? So who are the governors of Israel that the schools of prophets' heart is towards? Because this is governors... Yeah, just I mean, um, by the sound of it, it would mean like jail and those people that had um, their heart on the best interest of Israel and not necessarily the best interest of themselves. OK, and, and right. And so this governors is not so much about the leaders. It's actually about um, the people. The scribes. Well, the scribes. Right. When we put something on, on a metal tablet, right? What do we think of writing something on a metal tablet? I mean, Engraving. Okay. And what verse? Um, wouldn't it? Uh, Isaiah. There's, yeah. there's other ones. But one we have. So, so there's other ones writing on tablets and engraving things. But the one that I'm thinking of here is... Uh, write it, uh, take the a great role. Well, this role here is actually a tablet for writing um, by analogy, a mirror, right? And and write it in a man's pen according to Maher Shalah Hashbaz, right? So this is going to be about the 2520 prophetic mirror in Isaiah chapter eight. And so that's where my, my mind goes. I mean, I know there's, our sins being written and, and all those types of things. But here in this context of what we're looking at, um, 
this is about this structural chiasm that I notice in the 777 structure. All right now, <clears throat> well, and one of the reasons why we put 5 9, uh, or pardon me, yeah, you know, 5 8, we have to do with September 7th. So 5 8 also ties to September 7th because the word they chose right there at 5 8. So just remember that. And Jeff had connected 777 to, or not 777, September 7th to 977 BC. Um, but so we can see that this kind of blends into each other when we go from September 7th to November 9th. That is the period of the battle in the gates or the war in the gates, right? So it begins in that period of darkness. So in some ways, these verses overlap. But now we get to verse 9. Um, if we're talking about April 26, 2020, that must be referring to uh, the writing of, because I'm using this, this chiastic structure. So I'm starting with the Mayan calendar. December 21st, 2012, and I'm counting 777 days, which go to my 52nd birthday. And 52 times 360 is 18720, right? But of course, if I count from my birthday, when I'm born, actually that many days, 18,720, it's five. Am I the only one experiencing problems with his cutting in and out? Yeah, so you're saying my mic is cutting in and out? Uh, I'm hear hearing you cutting in and out. Now, I, I just asked if there, anybody else is experiencing that. No. Yeah, because I'm hearing you cutting in and out there, um, Ron. So I'm All not. Right. So that's probably what's happening. Okay, so anyway, we, we have this. The 777 structure. So there's 777 days. We looked at that. It's going to be a part. There's two different periods of, of 777 days at the end of our structure and two periods at the beginning with 183 days in the middle. Right. So... I don't want to go into that whole structure again, but the point that I'm making is that's what I present to Jeff on April 26th. So if we're talking about writing, engraving, that would be a mirror, right? You're writing on a piece of metal. So, so that's what this, this governor's is referring to. It's referring to the scribes of Israel, right, inscribing something. And that would be that Deborah, that is the school of prophets, is toward that, right? That's what's happening in that history. Jeff is recognizing these chiastic structures. He recognizes the Levitical chiasm. And that becomes the model for the 777 structure. So... When I looked at the, at the Mayan calendar, the reason why I did so in the way that I did was because of what Jeff had done with the Levitical chiasm, right? So he had those, the 226 year period, 26 day periods, right? With the 391 and a half, um, or the 329, pardon me, between the beginning of it. The 391 and a half went to the middle of the 126 days, right? So that whole structure that we see here, um, right? That structure from June 9th to January 11th, 2020, that was the inspiration for me creating that chiasm where I'm going to have 777 days and 777 days and then 118 183 days and then 777 and 777 right because i saw this in his structure 
And so I looked for it in what we had had connected to the Mayan calendar. So before that, I, I never looked for that structure. So we can see then this April 26, 2020 letter is the empowerment of what Jeff had done, right? But it's because a message arrived regarding the Mayan calendar on November 9th, 2019, being you know, officially presented to the movement on that date because I'm at the School of the Prophets. That right. sounds logical. Yeah. And Deborah, of course, is Rep the B. This is North Bumblebee Road, right? So I'm going to send this email to Jeff and saying that the prediction is going to fail. So it's pretty obvious that the next waymark is July 18, 2020. That that is going to be the second angel arriving, along with the failure of that prediction. Now, technically... I present on July 17th what I presented on April 26, 2020 to Jeff through an email. Now, I had presented it earlier. That is, I did a presentation. I sent Jeff the email. Um, but in that presentation, it was just my initial understanding of that, that it was on a line of failed prediction. So, you know, we could put that date in there, whatever day it was, it would be just a week before that or something. And then I presented again on July 17th and on July 19th, I go through it again, why the prediction failed. Um, and, and again, that was at the school of the prophets, right? Um, on July 17th and 18th. No, I'm here in. Oh, you did it there and uh, shipped it out. Yeah. So, yeah, so it's this, yeah, because I, the last time I was at the School of the Prophets was November 9th, 2019. Well, I was there till the 11th. I left on the 11th, right? So, so this here, I have to send Jeff an email. And yeah, the, a lot of people did watch the presentation from July 19th, not as many from July 17th. But I knew by July 17th that if the prediction failed, I had the answer why it was it was obviously it was on a line of failed predictions and that would give us the reason to understand why the prediction failed now not everybody accepts that which i find odd um because here I, we have this complete structure that shows us the prediction fails and why it fails that we can't predict the future because they couldn't do it with the mind calendar prediction that the world was going to end. They couldn't do it with uh, the September 23rd, 2017 prediction that, you know, the secret rapture was going to happen or whatever they expected. Um, beginning a period of 1260 literal days. Um, and so I could see that even November 9th was on that. We know no November 9th, 2019 is a failed prediction for the Omega. And, and so it didn't make sense to me that July 18th is there on a line of failed predictions, but it's not going to fail. I mean, what I thought is maybe something happens that we don't expect or, or whatever, but we know all the evidence pointed to that date, but that doesn't mean that it's going to succeed because all the evidence pointed to these other dates, right? So, you know, the question is, why would it fail? And so I knew if it did fail, I knew why it failed. We can't predict future events. And this is the thing that I wanted to understand with the, the Thanksgiving prediction back in 2018. Because here we had something that pointed to, to an event. Could we predict that event? And obviously we couldn't. You know, and even after the event, we didn't necessarily agree on the significance of it though I still think I was right about the significance of it. Um, so, but Jeff agreed that, that, the, that the date was correct and he had a different interpretation of what happened. But still, nonetheless, we couldn't predict ahead of time uh, events, what events were going to happen. And I think that's an important point. We should have learned that. 
We still haven't seemed to learn that. And that's what these lines are addressing here because we still have predictions. Now, um, so this is obviously the disappointment. I don't know if I really need to write that in there, but we did. Um, now, as far as the verses then, so you're not looking at the chart, you're looking at these verses. Um, so speak ye that ride on white asses, ye that sit in judgment and walk by the way. So if we're going to deal with, um, so I'll switch here so you can see what I'm doing. Um, so I'm saying that Judges 5.9 is this um, email, right? That is, it's, it's about the scribe inscribing this mirror and showing that this, this prediction will, will fail. And then this disappointment, we definitely have the symbol of 510. Now, of course, the 10th day of the fifth month is the other July 18 date. That's July 31st on the Gregorian, July 18 on, on the Julian. Um, so, um, what does this what does this mean? So the verse itself is um, I'll just read it. Speak ye that white ride on white asses, ye that sit in judgment and walk by the way. So we already said these these what these asses represent Islam. So this is the attack upon on Nashville by Islam, which didn't happen, and. Uh, it says uh, white asses. So this refers to Ellen White's prediction regarding Nashville. Can we agree with that? Yes. Okay. And then we said the speak is this 78, 78, right? So uh, speak ye that ride on white asses. So the Hebrew number is 78, 78. And 78 is uh, simply if you multiply 78 by 24, you get um, 1872, right? So that's July 18, 2020. 78. And it's doubled. What? I'm sorry, that was 78, 78? Yep, 78. Seven, but if you multiply 78 by 24, you're going to get 1872, right? So that's just the number of hours. So 78 days, right? But we have 78, 78. So it's doubled. It shows the second angel's message. We're saying the second angel's message is being marked here as July 18, 2020 in this line. We have a verse which ties to July 18th as being the 10th day of the fifth month. And we also have uh, this 78 then by 24 giving us 1872, that is July 18, 2020, right? So definitely that verse fits there. It, we shouldn't have any problem putting Judges 5.10 there. Now, it also says that he's going to speak or speak ye that what ride on white asses, ye that sit in judgment. Now, now this word judgment here isn't the usual word you see as judgment um, because there are different words that are translated judgment. This one's less common and it is a word that um it's actually in hebrew it's just the word mad it means measure such as measuring a cloth garment uh, a carpet right um so this would probably be more uh like a tailor but <laughs> um but in this judgment we're measuring something now, have we measured a carpet in this movement? The flying scroll, right? The flying roll. I don't remember measuring it, but yeah, I, I, I know what you're talking it's, about. It's the 2520, right? If you measure, if you, it, because it tells you how many cubits and you can figure it out and it's the 2520, the 21260s. Right, that's the, the curse that that flieth over the face of the whole earth. He that is um, 
swears on one side shall be cut off according to it. He that steals shall be cut off on another side according to it. It's the Ten Commandments, um, the two tables of the law, the two tables, 1843, 1850 charts, etc. right? So we're, we're all familiar with that. We should be. <clears throat> so they need to speak. So remember, we also are brought to Ezekiel to chapter 20, right? So here, let's go there. So remember, Ezekiel 20, we're brought to that. And Ezekiel 20 is um, is given on what date? What date does he have his vision? It's the seventh year, the fifth month, the tenth day of the month, right? That's what it says. Yeah, and that's 13 days after July 18, which is the 26th day of the fourth month. And, of course, 13 days is... Um, what is it, 18,720 minutes or something like that, right? So we have the symbol of July 18, 2020. It's also connected with, with the 13 days after July 18. And um, certain of the elders of Israel came to inquire of the Lord and sat before me, right? So, so those that sit in judgment, right, those that are sitting that are measuring, right, we can see here this occurs on the 10th day of the fifth month. So, so what does that mean in the context of this, this chart, right? So we got, speak ye that ride on white asses, ye that sit in judgment. It's that same Hebrew word, 3427. Um, and they're sitting in judgment, they're measuring. Now walk, that's halak, that's just a common word for walk. Uh, by the way, and we can see the way there is Derek 1870. So again, you have July 18 being symbolized in this verse. What do the asses mean? Well, that refers to Islam, right? So this is, in this case, it's a female ass, right? It's Athon, right? And we said the white refers to Ellen White. To her prediction regarding Nashville. So that's that's what we're saying. That's what we are predicting. And we know that um, in these in July 18th, we have two different dates. Now, when I first recognized July 18th, it was the 10th day of the fifth month. That is, we didn't have the 26th day of the fourth month as July 18 yet. So when I first recognized July 18th, it was the Julian date of July 18, 2020, being the 10th day of the fifth month, because we used Ezekiel to arrive at that date. And then Stephen made some attempts which to attach July 18, 2020. And then I noticed the 26th day of the fourth month. And that's how we connected that 180 years after um, July 27th, uh, 1840, right? So that which is the 26th day of the fourth month, and we just looked 180 years later, we had the 26th day of the fourth month in 2020. That was July 18th on the Gregorian. So now we have two dates. So when we look at July 18, 2020, we have to recognize that there are two different dates here. July 18, 2020, both Gregorian and Julian. Okay. Maybe I'll do it this way. I'll go like this. There we go. That looks nicer. Okay. Sorry about that. So we got these two different July 18s. Now, the July 18, um, that is July 31st, um, how would we recognize the significance of this in the context of our disappointment? 
Now, remember, there were some people waiting for July 31st to pass before they could accept that our prediction failed, right? So that means they're going to wait 18,720 minutes after July 18th before they accept this, right? So I'm going to do a presentation on July 31st. That's going to be the Friday night, um, two weeks after I presented about the failed prediction. So what's the significance there? How do we fit this into the symbol? Speak ye that ride on white asses, ye that sit in judgment and walk by the way. And even this word ride, um, it means uh, to ride on an animal or in a vehicle, causatively to place upon, right? So it means to, to be placed, to place upon something, to dispatch, bring on a horse or horseback, carry, get oneself on a horseback, put, cause to make to ride in a chariot. So, so when we're saying, speak ye that ride on white asses, um, this is obviously that are depending upon giving this message regarding Ellen White's prediction about Nashville, right? That's what and it's they, looking like. Right, and they sit in judgment, that is to measure, right? And we're measuring time, right? Right. And, and walk by the way. Of course, the way, the Hebrew number for Derek is 1870. So you can see the symbol of July 18. But this must be the July 18, which is the Julian date, in, in the sense of the sitting in judgment. Right? So there needs to be a declaration, a dispatch, a delivering of a message about the disappointment, right, about July 18th. And that's going to be the second angel that arrives, right? So there's a message that's given in connection with July 18th that is going to be explaining this disappointment to the movement. Is, does that seem consistent? Yes. Okay. And, and to me, this is, this is very clear as we lay these verses out that the song of Deborah and Barak is a reiteration of the significance of our history given to the movement so that we can understand our disappointment. We can understand our history. We can understand how God is leading us. Okay. Is that is anybody else on that? I, I think it's pretty clear that that this must be what the song of De Deborah and Brack is about. Uh, I, I would agree. Okay. But I'm just one person. We yes, follow no. one, or there's ten of us here. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just one person, too. So. So I'm going to do a presentation on July 31st, which I'm just looking at right now. Um, and just seeing what the topic was, because. Um, And I think what I was addressing based on what I'm seeing here is I was addressing uh, specifically the invitation that was being made to Northern Israel. Um, that is, we're, I'm presenting uh, Second Chronicles 29 and 30. So what would be the significance of that as July 18th?
What was the? Here's what I say. So it's Second Chronicles 29. That's the eight days. Here's what I say. So this is in minute one of this video from July 31st, 2020. It's the Friday night Zoom study. So I say the study tonight is on Second Chronicles chapter 29. And this was at, um, uh, 29 and 30 was studied in this message in connection with the priests and Levites. So now I'm going to try to give an overview as we look at the scripture of how we have understood this and then how uh, it would apply when we're looking at what we're called to do now after July 18th. Okay, does that make sense? What I'm saying that the message that I'm giving on July 13th, is this not a dispatch? A message to the movement Right. So to those that accept July 18th, we need to give a message. A message about July 18th. And it's a message of time measuring. Right. So that's what we're going to begin to do after July 18th is we're really going to start to measure things much more than we did before. Greater intensity. Right. And and we see now that we have a message because, you know, the uh, the objections that people had after July 18th was we failed, you know, um, we're embarrassed. And and I'm saying, no, this was not a, a failure. This was God's providence to show us that we. We had things to learn. Right. So we may call it a disappointment. But. In this period of time, this 18,720 minutes that we had, um, we evaluated our disappointment and we now know what our message is, what our mission is. And that is we need to call Northern Israel, right? Because that's what they do in Second Chronicles chapter 29 and 30. First, though, they cleanse the sanctuary, right? Eight days and eight days. The priests and the Levites. That's this movement. The priests, right? And then we have a work to do for the Levites. And then we have a work to do in calling the world, right? The Protestants, northern Israel. And so that's, that's what this movement is now doing, right? So we can see that's the second angel arriving. When is this formalized? So we would look at the verses to try to figure that out. We know it's formalized. We know it's going to be empowered. And we know a third angel arrives that should show up in these verses. And so far, we can see that, that things just fit nicely. Because we're, we're following the scriptures, just letting it guide us. And, and our history is divine history, right? It's, it's the history of God interacting with this movement. So it says, um, they that are delivered from the noise of the archers. So we know that the deli delivery from the noise of the archers is... Um, because we talked about this. So this is where um, there's the failure of the prediction and the places of drawing water, this would be doctrine. And there they shall rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. So that's examining the foundation, right? His righteous acts toward the inhabitants of his villages in Israel. Then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gates. Right. So so there was this war in the gates. But this means that this movement now is. Going to be um, studying. Right. And it's going to retain. 
the name. Right? That makes sense to people? It retains the yes. name. So, so the School of the Prophets is gone. You know, it was sold 187 days after July 18th. So, so we have to understand what does that mean? So we know that we lost the battle. I mean, FFA won the battle for the institutions. But those institutions are going to be gone. Lambert Church is going to be sold. FFA is going to be dismantled. And the School of the Prophets is going to be sold. But we still have this message for those that are... Um, delivered from the noise of the archers in the places of drawing water, there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. So, um, and we said this was a trough, right? This places, the places of drawing water. So it's a trough, whatever, whatever that means particularly, I don't know, but we know that this has to do with doctrine. And then it says, awake, awake, Deborah, awake, awake, utter a song, arise, <coughs> Barak, and lead thy captivity captive, thou son of Abinoam. Then he made that him that remaineth. Now, um, this means to remain alive. Have dominion over the nobles among the people. The Lord made me have dominion over the mighty. Out of Ephraim was there a root of them against Amalek. Now, this other part we're going to have to look at a um, little bit uh, separately. But so let's go back to here. So we have them delivered. So we have 5 verse 11. They're delivered from the noise of the archers. Now, you could probably put that at July 18th. But we don't know what we have as the formalization date yet. So... So how are we going to address what it says in 511? Where are we going to place that verse? Uh, the rehearsing of the righteous acts toward the inhabitants of his villages in Israel. Then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gates. And then verse 12, awake, awake, Deborah, awake, awake, utter a song, arise, Barak. And lead thy captivity captive. All these doublings. And remember. Yeah, all <laughs> these doublings. Yeah. Now, so we have the formalization of the message. We haven't put a date there yet. We don't know what that date is yet. But if we think about, no, so let's think about some of the, the events that are significant. December 6, 2020 is significant. Could we attach these symbols there? They that are delivered from the noise of the archers in the places of drawing water. Right? So what are the places of drawing water? Well, um, could those have been Zoom meetings? I mean, um, we're drawing water in these Zoom meetings. Uh, okay. Now, we could also say the School of the Prophets, FFA. Yes. Or, yeah, or, no matter where it was being done, it's drawing water. Right. So, so, and they're delivered from the noise of the archers, right? The December 6th date for me is, um, it, it, it makes sense because, they're delivered from the noise of the archers, which um, the FFA at that point didn't want to have anything to do with. Right. So I mean, now FFA is going to cut off themselves from the message on December 6, twenty twenty. Right. And the distance themselves from the message. Will that so at that point uh, deliver the others? Because um, I kind of feel like I've been delivered after they kicked me out. 
on the yeah, 22nd. Yeah, you know, the word delivered's not there, right? Um, so, you know, it just says, you know, uh, from the noise of the archers in the places of drawing water, there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. They that are delivered is completely added um, because they're trying to, you know, put it into. And, and so all you have here in. Oh, Hebrew, okay, I noticed that now. I'm sorry. I didn't see that before. Yeah. So all you have here in Hebrew is uh, 6963. Uh Coal, and it just has this mem, mem in front of it. So that means from the noise. Coal is noise, right? Bleeding, cackling, cry, fame, lightness, lowing noise. Yeah, there uh, was a lot of noise then. Yeah. So from the noise of chatz, uh, which is just the word for archer. But it also means, um, you know, properly to chop into peace or sever, hence to curtail, to distribute into ranks as denominative uh, from the 2671, to shoot an arrow, right? So it, so the archers here is those that are in their ranks, right? That's the idea of the, yes. the literally. And then it just has ben, bien, which means um, between, right? So so from the noise of the archers between, um, and then at Mashab, between the trough, that is the place for the drawing of water, um, and there they that ascribe, so celebrate, praise, commemorate, rehearse. So here we have a word they translated as rehearse, um, but it's in the sense of rehearsing of celebration, right? So we know that we're going to examine the foundation of the message at some point, right? The examining of the foundation. Um, that's going to begin. Uh, I can't remember if the examining the foundation, what date we did that on, I used to know. Um, can't think which date um but anyway it's so we know that we're going to do that but i don't know if that's where we would mark the way mark but maybe and 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 that they're going to rehearse these righteous acts of the lord right even the righteous acts of um that is the leadership of israel right so these are the righteous acts of the Lord, which are the righteous acts. And, and we have this word, uh, uh, perazon, magistry, that is leadership, chieftain. Here they translated it as villages. Right? But, but these are the righteous acts of the leadership. So do we examine the foundation and look at rehearse uh, the work of the pioneers and Jeff, right? So we examine all those things. Now we're going to come to this point where uh, the movement is going to reject all of this. So I don't know if we would put December 6th there or some other date any any thoughts on that because this is talking about rehearsing the righteous acts of the leadership right the righteous acts of jehovah which is manifest in uh, the leadership now we have 187 presentations that we did on examining the foundation Right. And that's going to begin on March 7th, 2021. So that's going to be um, a significant date. March 7th is a symbol of the Sunday law. Right. So what if we put that there? Because that's the next verse. 
and it's describing what happened when we examine the foundation. Does that seem fair? And the date again? March March, 20, March 7th, right? So remember, in March 7th, um, 2321, that's the first Sunday law, right? And so it's going to be that date for the Sunday law symbol that we're going to have. <laughs> beginning of the match. better and better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so here we have the examining of the foundation. That's when it begins, right? Yeah. So, um, maybe I'll just put here rehearse. And that's going to be five verse 11, right? So that, that's what we do. That's the date that's marked. Uh, and that's, that's, that's the verse that describes what happens on that date. And that was uh, examining the foundations. Yeah, that's when we started examining the foundation study. Okay. Can we note that someplace? Um, well, I, I just wanted to make it shorter, but get that way. So should we see how that fits in? <clears throat> so yeah, it does fit in because you know the first thing that we did after it, it, I mean not the first very first thing, but um, the studies, my interest was trying to figure out I'm an experimenter. And in experimenting, you have to figure out what your failure was and then uh, adapt to that or fix that failure by adding using something else or fix that failure by figuring out what you did wrong yeah and and so th that's what I that's what I felt we went to is we went to or we should have went to and uh, that was where did we go wrong or yeah. or did we even go wrong yeah, so yeah, we should have gone to where we went wrong, and and but that's what we did. I mean, we did examine the foundations. Now, yes, we did. Now, when we look at five twelve, um, now the thing is, we have lots of verses here. I mean, a lot more verses, and we're saying that this is the song of Deborah and Barak. Um, you know, in some ways, we we could just say, well, we're going to take you know, 510, 511, this is the thing that we're doing during this whole time. We're examining the foundations. We're trying to understand our message. But I think that there is something when we start to move to these next verses, we'll see how this fits in. So 512, awake, awake, Deborah, awake, awake, right? So this is a call to the movement to awake, right? December 25th, 2021. It's the last day of our 777 structure. Now, Stephen is given um, the 777 years from 457 to 321 AD, something we should have known, we should have noticed long before. We should have counted the 777 years, and we should have recognized that. But he doesn't recognize it till December 25th, 2021. And this is, of course, when Colin presents his structure that gives us January 11th. Um, but the, the important part here of this line, if we look at what this second angel's message is about, it's about the message that we need to have. And our message is about the 777, right? 
Yes. Okay. So, and, and the previous one before that, the formalization is March 7th, 2021. That is the anniversary of 321. It's 1700 years later. Right? Yeah, I think that's what we came up with. Yeah, so it's 1700 years after the Sunday law, right? Of course, it's Julian date to Gregorian date, but that we know that doesn't matter, right? Um, and then we have uh, December 25th, and we have the 777 as the empowerment of this message that was formalized. Because this, so this 777, um, from 321 to 2021, we'll just say, right? So this here, or maybe I'll do it this way. I'll go 457 to 321. We'll do it that way. But that relates back to uh, just what we saw there in that verse. Yeah, so Angela put up some things dealing with measure the tekels, the shekels, and also Isaiah 51, awake and hearken, um, counsel to awaken. And so we can see clearly here that this movement was called to awake. And, and I, we have two things. So we have Stephen's study and we have Odilio's study, Right. Or not, not Steve, but Colin's study, right? So we have Colin's study, and then seven weeks later, we have Adelio's study. So, right, 49 days. Yeah. So we have, a, a, you know, seven, yeah, yeah, 49 days. Okay. Okay, um, so this is going to be verse 12. Just trying to think about the 512, any significance in that. I mean, we know it's. Um, Iran, 512, what's the significance? Two to the ninth power, right? So <clears throat> I'll do that here. Two to the ninth power. So that's the 20th day of the ninth month, right? So maybe I'll do this up here. Right, so two and two are four, four and four are eight, eight are, and eight are 16, 32, 64, 128, 256. 512, right? So, and of course, we know that this is the 20th day of the ninth month. So those are symbolized there. <clears throat> so that's more reason to put 512 on December 25th, 2021. Right. right. And then we have Colin's prediction, 383 days after he gives that prediction. Now, we, we also recognize the three days there, right? So the three days as a symbol with Ezekiel, uh, 512 and 215. Uh, uh, dates of Pius's, uh, it's the sixth capture and William Miller's birthday, right? So... 
that's February 15th as well as a symbol if we took 512 and reversed it, right? That's what she means by those two slashes. I usually use the two arrows, the left and the right direction arrows, and put them together so to show that it's a mirror. But anyway, um, so we can see that we have this symbol. And Pope Pius was born on December 25th, by the way, right? So, so that has that December 25th date tied to Pope Pius. <laughs> Just let's keep piling it on. Right. So, so you can see that, that these become extremely powerful symbols to show that we have this date, that we started this line without knowing anything about it. Well, we know we have the January 11th symbol in it. And yeah, that was the only thing that we stuck there. Right. And, and so, but all of this that we put in here, we can see how it fits. That these aren't arbitrary things. These aren't really subjective. I mean, these are more objective. I mean, there's some subjectivity always involved, but but we're using the symbols that are given to us, and they do fit in 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 a very neat way, and they keep giving us many witnesses. So. Um, uh, so we have the January 11th, 2023. So it's the end of this prediction. So we're just going to say it's a close of probation. So I don't mean it's a close of probation. It's, it's at least it's not a probation that we believe that closed. But I know Odilio in his study, um, he didn't necessarily say that this date is a close of probation, right? That, that's not what he did. But he attached to Collins message the idea that there is a close of probation if you don't accept the Trump prediction. But when we look at this prophetic mirror and we look at the fact that this is the seventh, it is a close of probation of that message of Collins. Now, the thing that we should see is that when Collins prediction failed, by January 11th, 2023. It's, it's not wise to continue the prediction. That is, we need to know what his prediction was and that there is significance in it because what Colin gave us was light, right? We agree with that. But after January 11th, 2023, it doesn't make sense to continue that prediction. Right. He 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 made a very clear prediction. Then he tried to argue it wasn't a prediction. Right. And that he still needs to keep readjusting his prediction, because in his view, the, the interpretation or the conclusion that he came to was that Trump is going to bring in the Sunday law and he set some time limits. Right. And he kept adjusting that's, that's those balls. Yeah, after after the the failure of the election, he he said, "Well, Trump still is going to come into power, but he's not going to be elected." Now he's changed it that Trump's going to be elected. But the thing is, we were given some light on December twenty fifth, twenty twenty one, that we were unwilling to examine as a movement. That is, we wouldn't look at it and say, "What does it really mean?" We're, and instead, we're going to hold to the idea that this we need to find fulfillment in what Jeff had said in the way that he understood it, right? But we can see that there is a fulfillment that has occurred, and we missed out on those things as we, we move through this history. So yeah, that, when, that, that sounds like a good way to put it. So we've had this message all through this year from this, this period here from July 18, 2020. Now, when I talked to Colin on Saturday night, on, you know, on Sabbath, in his study, he does not accept the idea that July 18, its failure shows us that we can't predict time. So he doesn't agree with that conclusion. He believes that we can predict time. 
And, and to me, it's pretty clear that we've been shown all through this history we can't. Now, we can know that it's near, even at the doors. We can measure the time. We need to measure the time. We need to be watching and waiting. And we can see that we've been given this time as a witness that God is leading after events have passed. We can now go back and look at these things and say, this is amazing, right? And we, we're following these very specific rules. We have a line. The pattern is Millerite history. We have a period of darkness. We have two clear, distinct messages that are formalized and empowered on specific dates. And these are tied to stories in the scriptures that we can clearly see. And if we can't recognize this, we are in danger because this is what God has given us to understand. So the amount of witnesses that have been given to us can't be neglected. Right? We can't say, well, we didn't, we didn't learn from July 18th that we can't predict events. And from all the other events that have been predicted and have failed since July 18th. So we need to recognize that no matter how tempting it is to see a date in the future and think on that date, such and such an event is going to happen, whether you have it as whatever it is, June 2nd, he has now for Nashville or something like that, June 3rd, I can't remember, I think it's June 3rd, or, you know, you're going to put it at July 18th this year or something like that. These are dangerous things to do. Well, because haven't we seen the results of this stuff? Well, the thing I is, mean, we've been given this warning. We've been given this period of time. We've been given this second angel's message since July 18th. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, And now the third angel's message has arrived, and we don't even recognize it. That is, I'm not saying people close their probation, right? I'm just saying as a symbol, that is there. People still have an opportunity. But in order to accept the third message that arrived on January 11th, which... We, we're going to be looking at that as we go through these lines again and clearly see this. We have to have accepted the lessons of July 18. Now, when we yeah, go, through, yeah. So when we go through the rest of this, which isn't going to be tomorrow. Um, now, Dwight, what are you presenting tomorrow? I don't know yet. Okay, so Dwight will be presenting something tomorrow. Heidi is going to be here. She's going to be recording it. Um, so she'll sit in my place here. Um, she's going to be presenting. Um, I'm going to be getting a, whatever they call it. I'm, I'm going to get it like a cap on a tooth. So so that has to happen tomorrow. Crown. But, crown, that's what they call it. Yeah, so I'm getting a crown. Um I have just a little bit of a tooth left that needs a crown. But anyway, uh, so I won't be here. I'll be here right at the beginning of the study. But anyway, we're going to come back to this on Sunday. And, and I do want people to look this over and try to figure this out for themselves. So we're going to see that uh, the verses from 13 um, are going to deal with the remnant. Right. And it's going to go through the, the history of this battle and the different tribes and their involvement in this battle. Now, it's pretty clear then that what's going to be uh, described in the rest of the verses is actually the fourth angel arriving in this history. April 27th is a day for crown in 31 AD. Okay. So Iran put a note there. So, um, and, and there's a lot more that I've been studying here about these, these lines in this chronology that we, we sort of addressed yesterday. I'm going to have to try to get it all together so people can see it um, because of dealing with the 777 months and, and so forth. There's, there's more to it as well. Um, but 
but I'm just saying that the rest of these verses are going to be the fourth angel arriving. So we actually have to make that line of the fourth angel arriving to finish off this chapter. Okay. Yeah, because we do have, uh, what, 15 more verses or so? Yeah, and they're going to be that repeat of this message because that's what she's going to do is she's going to rehearse all of these tribes. And, and there's a bunch of numbers and things that uh, are going to apply, right? Um, so, so we're going to have to do that. So um, now... So what we're going to do is we're going to put 513, I guess, is maybe what we should put as that verse, as the close of probation, because that's going to mention the remnant. Right. It's going to say, uh, then he made him that remaineth. Um, that is those alive, left, alive, remain, remnant, right, the rest, have dominion over the nobles. Um and here the nobles is this 117, and we can see the similarity there between 1117, uh, which is, uh, you know, 11 times 17 is 187. 117th uh, prime is, uh, I can't remember how that works now. Anyway, it has to deal with uh, this 1117. So this is nobles among the people that the Lord have made dominion over the mighty, right? So then it's going to be re rehearsing this history. So I just think 513 is, is that verse that relates to January 11th, 2023. So anyway, let's uh, close with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study this morning. And uh, we ask for your blessing upon this day the rest of this day in our personal study. And um, we pray for uh, the study tomorrow and Friday night. We ask, Lord, that you can continue to teach us. We ask for your safety and care that your angels watch over us. And we pray, Lord, that um, we can reflect your character uh, to those in this movement and around us. We know, Lord, we want people to hear what you are saying um, and to respond. And so we pray for each person. Help us as well to be faithful in all things. Bring us together again according to thy will. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.